Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Nind with Mare. I've got one of my favorite cardigans, a little bit of fringe on the bottom, and it's super comfy. And as a therapist, one of the rules rules of becoming a therapist is that you must love cardigans. We wear a lot of them, a lot of them. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be doing cardigan. I'm starting with the song because I absolutely love it. I know that it isn't chronologically in the right order of the love triangle between Betty, who is the speaker for cardigan, James, who is the speaker in the song, Betty, August, Augustine, the song August. If you're a Swifty, you know about this. You know about this love triangle. She spoke about it on Long Pond sessions, and I think that it is so beautiful, so cool. I'm gonna go into a lot of it right now, so if you don't wanna hear my like prep for the song and me analyzing it, then just go ahead and, and scoot ahead. I'll put the timestamp in the, in the bottom so that you can just skip right along. But if you would like to sit with me through this, let me explain a little bit. If you listen to the songs, you will know that folklore is really spring summer and that evermore the sister album is more winter and fall for the holiday season i did tis a damn season and that was off of evermore which makes sense because it's a winter song on a winter album so it's very important for us to keep this in mind when we're analyzing cardigan that this is a summer album okay i'll get into that more a little bit later also shout out to all of my folks in the queer community who yes there has been so much debate about these songs and about if it's a love triangle between a man and two women or it's three women. I think I'll talk about that a little bit more in Betty, but I will obviously talk about that there's these people that have a love triangle. So there's Betty, there is James. And some people might think that James identifies as a female and that is probably because of numerous things. One, we know that Taylor used the names after the children of Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. They have a daughter who is named James. Also, Taylor Swift herself is named after James Taylor. That's how her parents got her name. So if you think about that, James, James Taylor, also be a woman, Taylor, James Taylor. And there's August, who is part of the trifecta, and she is considered the other woman. And I really love that Taylor talked about this in the Long Pond sessions. I think Taylor said that she's trying to be the cool girl and okay with it, but I will get into all of that more in August and Betty. So today it's going to be Cardigan. And I believe that this is Betty speaking about her experience with James several years from when all of it took place, like reflecting back on her life. As a therapist, cardigans are very important to us. We always have um, a lot of different options available depending on the settings that we work in because cardigans are what they are comfortable they do have a bit of a classic style to it that is professional or shows like a level of refinement to have on a cardigan now a cardigan kind of goes in line with like the hipster style possibly for me this song does have a striking amount of melancholy which I love that word I love that emotion even though it's not the best feeling at the time to have a song that really does and capture that I think is super special. I also want to ask that you all like and subscribe. Please subscribe. If you watch my videos, it's like no big deal to just subscribe. It helps me, helps me out. So thank you so much for the love. I know that in Sweet Nothing, I got very emotional and a little bit of my own stuff came out that a lot of things that I am you know, dealing with relationship wise, I have a little bit of a open wound around love. And so if you see that coming out, that's, that's why, but I am absolutely doing okay. Please trust, trust. I would let you know if I was not, but I'm doing great, all things considered. So I'll put that to the side. Let's get into cardigan. Vintage tea, brand new phone, high heels on. Cobblestones When you are young They assume you know nothing Okay, right now What Miss Swift is so amazing at Is pointing out the duality Of things in life So you can have a vintage tee That's something that's old That you're wearing You also have a brand new phone Like an iPhone Something that, you know Our parents' generation Did not have access to at all Depending on what age range you're in High heels, high fashion, that's also in a very traditional setting like cobblestones. FYI, 
wearing high heels and cobblestones is not a smart thing to do. So she's acknowledging all of these different things that exist at the same time. You're young, they assume you know nothing. It's because of the, these things are kind of ironic. I remember for a brief period of time before I went into grad school and I was being a substitute teacher while I was studying for the GRE, I remember seeing you know, some of the students walk around with these old school vintage t-shirts like Fleetwood Mac. And I'm like, oh my God, I love your shirt. And they're like, oh, this? Oh, I don't know who they are. I just really liked what it looked like. I remember being, thinking like, what? You know, <laughs> I remember being, you know, thoroughly annoyed to some degree, but that's also totally okay at the same time. But I can see where if you look at somebody with a vintage tee and a brand new phone, you see people in high heels walking on cobblestones, you're like, you know nothing. But she's saying when you're young, they assume you know nothing. I think that it's not fair that we always judge the younger generations. I think it's just instinct to do that. But I, I truly have so much faith and I'm really, really impressed truly by the younger generations. While they are dealing with an increase of anxiety and depression because of social media, a lot of them are a lot more aware of mental health issues. I feel like they're more vocal and they're, they're really pushing against the hustle mentality. I think that they all take more risks to work on their own and that they don't feel as if they have to just work for a corporation for 35, 40 years of their life and retire. Like it just seems as if they, they've, they're really changing the game in a lot of ways. And I think that the younger generations, like having the availability and the reduced stigma around going to therapy have made them so much more self-aware and intuitive and able to identify their struggles. And it really, I think, puts them ahead of the game. And I, I really admire it. So truly love you, younger generation. You make me. You make me happy. Sequin smile, black lipstick, sensual politics. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. There's that duality again, bright versus dark and polite versus erotic. Just more of her genius coming through for us all. I'm gonna be stopping a lot, but this just makes me feel so good. I knew you. She's like, I knew you down to my bone. Dancing in your Levi's, it's just the classic image of Americana. And it really puts James in this approachable, down to earth light, I think, in this, and drunk under a street light. So she knew him when he was young and being silly and maybe experimenting. I knew you, hand under my sweatshirt, baby, kiss it better. I surprised to hear that when I had the first listen because this is dealing with a the theme of eroticism and I know that that might sound really strange here because they sound like they're young they're probably 17 I feel like that sounds like a shocking word for some reason I don't know if it's just the way that I grew up but it's really energized by our human experience it's layered with early childhood experiences of touch play or trauma which later becomes cornerstones of our erotic life maybe because it better makes me think of role playing <clears throat> think about when have you ever heard baby kiss it better get a boo-boo when you're little you're like oh i want me to kiss it better i think that it's signaling something that's youthful so it could just be signifying youth and that they're young saying baby kiss it better but i think it could be the beginnings of experimentation with sexuality coming up by using terms that are associated with role playing it's just the first experimentation with like role playing and and that type of sexual realm but i mean i could be wrong and this might just be my mind or really my training about <laughs> you know the effects of things in your childhood that impact your your being yourself and how you are also as a sexual being as well okay enough about that maybe I went on and on a little too much but I do feel like that line is really kind of not talked about and really overlooked all right let's keep going and when I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed So I'm smiling here because it sounds like really great, but there is a lot of hurt and pain in those lyrics right there. So she's saying when I felt like an old cardigan, so something that's just, it's comfortable, it's old, it's been used a lot of times and it's shoved underneath the bed and forgotten. Maybe it's forgotten for newer, shinier, other type of things. But right when she felt like she was an old cardigan, you put me on 
and said I was your favorite. This is where I do think that there's some subtle signs of emotional abuse and makes me think that James is not the best. Sorry, he's not. Not at this point, not in this reflection, because because when somebody says puts me on, it implies that there are other things that he could be wearing. It doesn't say you put me on and said I was the only one. No, she's saying you put me on and said I was your favorite. So he had choices between things, but it's kind of like from Jane's perspective, no, you should feel good that I chose you, you know? And him insinuating that he chose her and that he had many different options to choose from, that doesn't feel good. And that signals low key emotional manipulation going on. There's a double meaning to put me on. It, it could mean that you literally put on a cardigan, yes. But to put me on also means to deceive or to hoax someone. And if you need to know what hoax means, go back to my video where I reacted to the song hoax. This also stays in line with the duality that Taylor talked about at the beginning of the song. So it can mean something so sweet. Like you put me on and said I was your favorite, or it can mean something very deceptive or manipulative. Folklore is a spring summer album. Cardigan is something that you would typically wear in the winter or the fall time. I think that symbolizes that when James was alone in cold times, Betty was there for him. I often think about how we associate the seasons and spring, summer is more like good times out in the heat. Winter, fall is more of cold, darker, desolate times in our lives sometimes. So when James was maybe alone, Betty was there to comfort him. She's like a cardigan. She she's warm and she's and she's soft and she'll make you feel good. She'll keep you safe from the cold. But in the summer, he might have had cooler friends. So he didn't need Betty. Think about wearing a cardigan in the summertime. It wouldn't be necessarily easy to do or be comfortable. So that's what makes me kind of think that James maybe had a big head. That's what led to cheating in the summertime with August, Augustine. Because he didn't need the cardigan, right? He only used the cardigan when he needed it. He didn't say it's the only thing that I'll ever Ever need he's saying it was his favorite so he had lots of choices okay mm, mm, mm. it's way way deeper and more layered coming from a therapist clearly I don't know if I read into things too much but this is just the way that I I don't know this is the way that I see it can't I can't help it a friend to all is a friend to none chase two girls lose the one Okay, that goes back. She doesn't know who's the one. He told her that she's the favorite. That doesn't feel good. So if he is entertaining all of the people, all of his options, well, and it sounds like there's just two here, Betty and Augustine. So if you're being a friend to all, you're a friend to none. There's that duality there. Chase two girls, lose the one. Because sometimes people have to get hurt in life. Sometimes you have to make choices because the people that you care about the most are worth defending and worth choosing. I don't trust people who are a friend to everyone because that makes me think that who are they loyal to? If they're a friend to all of these people, who are they loyal to? So think about it. If he's chasing two girls at the same time, who's the one? Who's the one, James? Are young, they assume you know nothing. So when you are young, they assume you know nothing. So she is saying that maybe, maybe James was assuming that she knew nothing about the cheating. Or it could be about James that don't play dumb. Like when you're young, they assume you know nothing. So you can be like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know I was cheating. I couldn't make up my mind. You know, this was really confusing. This is the first time I've ever felt this way. You know, you can't, you can't play dumb as well too. So I think that this, these lyrics go both ways. Let's keep going. But I knew you playing hide and seek and giving me a weekend. I... There it goes back to that uh, eroticism I was talking about. <clears throat> It's kind of like this childlike behavior that I was talking about before that kind of leads into childlike behavior that can also exist in like eroticism, but it might not even be that. I don't know. I feel like I've said this word so many times. I'm going to get a phone call from my mom. To be like, why are you discussing these things on the internet? <laughs> I, I knew you, you heartbeat on the high line once in 20 lifetimes. I and I felt like I was. I love this one. So your heart be on the High Line. So the High Line is this awesome, awesome place. If you ever come to, to New York City, you should go there. It's down in Chelsea and it's about a mile and a half long park that is elevated off the ground and it's over top of an old ra railroad, I think, or railway. It's so awesome. All of you need to go there if you haven't. And 
it's cool that she's talking about his heartbeat on the high line. So this is just something that's been programmed into her memory and her mind, what his heartbeat sounded like when they were there. And maybe it's embedded in the place that maybe they used to, I don't know, fool around in. And she is saying that this is really, you know, the saying a once in a lifetime love. I think she's saying like once in 20 lifetimes, like this love was special. This one was once in a lifetime. More than that. It was, it's just embedded in her memory. And when I felt like I was an old card again under someone's bed, you put me on and said I was your favorite. that this is really the first time though that she signals that she's looking back like that's all we needed back then was to kiss in cars it's really sweet and and innocent and before life gets really tough as an adult person cherish those young times everyone <laughs> you drew stars around my scars but now I'm So it looks like at that point in time, James would comfort Betty by drawing stars around her scars. That's all he would ever be. He's just ink that can that can run or that can fade. I think he's missing the deeper connection or the deeper feelings that are going on there. Because if she had scars that she revealed to him, she shared something very personal. And the fact that he he took them and made them something beautiful, like by putting stars around them, must have meant so much to her. And she's also saying drew, so it's in the past, past tense. So it happened in the past. And she's like, but you drew these stars around my scars, but now I am bleeding. It's kind of like, what am I supposed to do now? He is ignoring his impact on her scars. Like now, now it's almost as if he is opening up those old wounds. And so now she's bleeding. Like they're gushing blood because now they're bleeding. What do I do now? It's as if, you know, drawing the stars around the scars was the easy thing to do, you know? He did those things so that he could distract her. He's left her alone, maybe even worse, because now those scars aren't scars anymore. She's bleeding. They're open, and it's painful. I knew you, stepping on the last train, march me like a bloodstain. Stepping on the last train. Mm. Stepping on the last train is definitely the theme of someone leaving her. I just imagine her being on the platform and he's on the last train. He's He's gone. And since it's the last train, she can't follow him. She can't go with him. Remember in the song that I loved, Sad, Beautiful, Tragic? I think that's what it was called off of the Red album. She talked about, she says, we wait for trains that just aren't coming. So she talks a lot about trains throughout her songs. The fact that it marked her like a blood stain, seeing that train go, it means that it's just a memory that you can't wash off. It was really, really, really painful. I knew you tried to change the ending, Peter losing Wendy. I... She's so brilliant. She's so brilliant. Like I can't take it. One of my subscribers wrote about being a Swifty in isolation. I'm sending so much love to you. I understand when people will challenge me on Taylor Swift, I'm like that she isn't as brilliant as I think she is. And look, everybody can have their own opinions, but just every single lyric is just soul crushing and deep and can be looked at in so many different ways. So when she says, you try to change the ending, Peter losing Wendy. Think about that. This is based on Peter Pan and Wendy. Have you all watched it? I mean, my favorite version and understanding of Peter Pan was in the movie Hook. I loved the movie Hook. Shout out to anybody else who loves that movie. Peter truly did love Wendy. Peter also loved being a little boy and he wanted to be a little boy forever. He wanted to play and be free. He wanted to be free and have fun, whereas Wendy wanted to grow up. Peter losing Wendy is like someone losing a young love and at the same time also having to make a tough decision what is more important to you so she's saying you tried to lose me to being young and not growing up and losing me you tried to change the ending i think that we know that the that they ended up together later on i believe that's what taylor had said that's, i believe that's what taylor had said in the interview i knew you leaving like a father running like water gosh 
oh, so good. Every single line. Leaving like a father, running like water. Oh, look, it is common knowledge. It is a fact that men are more likely to abandon their, their families than women. And there are way more kids out there that have a wound due to their father abandoning them than their mother abandoning them, them. Even though it does happen where obviously mothers can leave their children as well. There are a lot of father wounds going on out there, lots of them. You're a father, you don't leave your child. You're not supposed to abandon them, period no matter what. And there is the saying, blood is thicker than water. So if you are blood, that means that you stay through thick and thin. But when fathers leave like that, it's as if they're no longer blood. They're, they're water. They're just running away like water as if they are not a part of the family. And think about her song in mine, where she says, you made a rebel of a careless man's careful daughter. This is the antithesis of that. She's saying like, you left like everyone that promised that they wouldn't, which if we break it down, it just means that your word means nothing. And sometimes there's parents where their words mean nothing. They're just shot to hell because they run. They don't follow through. They're running like water. I think that for Betty, it really is cutting open also a childhood wound where she probably has daddy issues. And also when you think about the childlike references throughout the song, that also hints to that as well. And that this is a wound that he knew about, the scars that he drew the stars around, but now she's bleeding because he cut her open and left her just like her dad did. Again, I am a therapist, so this is the way that I think and interpret things. I know that a lot of people probably won't think that this is the case and that I'm reading way too into it, but that's what I think. And when you are young, they assume you know when I hear that, also I think about when parents fight when you're a little kid or when a dad leaves a child or a mother leaves a child, they assume that the kids don't pick up on it. They assume that the tension or the issues are kept under wraps when really, no. Kids know everything, they sense everything. So when she says, when you're young, they assume that you don't know, but you know. And that might be why she has those scars. But I knew you like a tattoo kiss. smell of smoke is still there because it's lingering. The the smoke, the flames from our wreckage, from the end of us, the smoke can still linger because of the effect of the embers of the flames that once were there. We're never really extinguished. But it also, I think, is, is nodding to James, like you can be the one to stoke the fire. It makes me think of a lot of different things. Is the saying that don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. And that goes back to people pleasing, codependency, where you do things for another person, but almost to your detriment. It ends up harming you more than it even helps them. And usually they can't appreciate how much you're trying to help them. <laughs> Hello, loving an addict. So when you think about don't set yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm and the way that smoke can linger on clothing, like it could linger on an old cardigan from that time period. reminds me also of youth. And I only say that because I have a little boy who, if you take him to a grocery store, I mean, he's chasing around things. He's seeing things, using his imagination. It's very childlike. I knew you'd miss me once the thrill expired and you'd be standing in my front porch light. You guys, it's so good, it's so good. There's so much in there. It feels as if at the end, there's still that duality going on. Like whether this was a blessing or a curse, this relationship, the difference between having experience versus 
innocence. There's neglecting versus cherishing, intimacy versus distance. There it's old versus new. And also the really big one, which is staying versus leaving. This one cuts really deep. Think that it, it really has a lot of melancholy in it. And looking back at a relationship for what it really was, I think being underestimated and not appreciated because he looked at her as a cardigan and she was the favorite, but he had lots of choices. But she knew, like, you know, no, no, you're underestimating me. You want to come back to me. I am the only one. And that James should call it what it is. So, okay. I can't wait to hear from all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. Lots, lots going on here. And, and yes, I will be doing the Betty and August ones very soon. All right. Take care. Be well. Subscribe. Bye-bye.